Hallelujah. Well, um, you may be seated, and I have a word that, that is on my heart for you tonight. And um, we're going to read a few scriptures together, and I'm going to begin in Acts chapter 5, verse 19. Um, the context of this passage is that the apostles have been arrested for preaching the gospel. Um, and it says this in verse 19. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people the full message of this new life. Let me read that again. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people the full message of this new life. Everyone say full message. Everyone say new life. Say full message. Say new life. The angel didn't say, go and tell people the message. He said, go and tell people the full message. Who knows there is power in the gospel. The message of the gospel, it is the power of God unto salvation. But that, that verse tells me, that instruction tells me that it's possible to preach the gospel, but only preach a partial message. I don't know about you, but I want the full message. I want everything that the blood of Jesus purchased for me at the cross 2,000 years ago. Can you say amen? If I were to ask you tonight, what is the gospel? What is the message? What is the meaning of Easter? Many of us will perhaps say that Jesus came and he died on a cross so that our sins could be forgiven. And then three days later, he rose again so that we could have eternal life in heaven for, forever and ever. Praise God for that message tonight. Amen. Who is glad that they are forgiven tonight? Who is glad that the blood of Jesus has washed their sins away? Amen. And who is glad tonight that Jesus is alive, that Jesus lives, and that because of his resurrection... In Christ, you will live forever and ever as well. Amen. Thank God that tonight death has no hold over us. We are not fearful of death. We are not fearful of the grave because death has lost its sting. Jesus is alive and we will live with him for eternity. Amen. That message that our sins are forgiven, that we have eternal life is a powerful message. But that is only part of the message and the angel told the apostles don't just preach part of the message preach the full message and the full message is what the full message of new life new life and so it's not just that the message is not just that you are forgiven and that you are going to heaven the message is this that right here on earth you are called to live in the newness of life. Hallelujah. And, and so I want to talk to you tonight for a few minutes about this word new. Everyone say new. If you have a Bible, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. This is what it says. Therefore, if anyone, everyone say anyone, if anyone is in Christ... He is a what? New creation. The old has what? Gone. The new has come. Hallelujah. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. Everyone say the new has come. Everyone say, the new is here. The new is present. The new is available. Hallelujah. Who is ready for the new tonight? The old has gone. The new has come. Anyone is in Christ. He is what? A new creation. Hallelujah. Who knows that tonight you are a new creation. 
Glory to God. What does that mean to be a new creation? In Greek, there are two words for new. The first is the word neos. And neos means that something is new in time. But the second word is kainos. And that means that something is new in kind. In other words, it is brand new. Kainos is a creative word. So let me give you an example to show you the difference between these two different new words. Or the meaning of, of these two words that are translated in our Bibles, new. We uh, currently live in the city of Hull in East Yorkshire. And we moved there um, from South Yorkshire eight years ago. And we moved into a house that was on a street called Brindley Street, 72 Brindley Street. And uh, I remember the day we got our keys and the uh, removal van um, turned up at our old house and took us to our new house. And we celebrated because we had arrived in our new house. However, here was the thing. That house was probably about 60 years old. So who knows? It was new for us. But it was not new. Does that make sense? Other people had lived in that house. Other families had lived in that house. Other uh, men and women and boys and girls had made memories in that house. It was new for us. It was neos. It was new in time but it was not new in kind. But um, about three years ago, we moved into a new house. And this was a new, new house. It was brand new. It was built during the, the COVID lockdown. And the, as soon as that lockdown lifted, we were able to move into a brand new house that no one had ever lived in. This was a kainos house. It was something that had just been created. It was new, not just in time, but it was new in kind. When the Bible says, you are a new creation, it uses that word, kainos. In other words, when you came to Christ, God did something brand new new. C.S. Lewis said that Jesus did not come to make bad men good. He came to make dead men alive. Hallelujah. Jesus did not just come to give you a better life. Jesus did not just come to improve your life. Jesus created something brand new when you came to him. Hallelujah. So here is the message of the gospel. That you came to Jesus a sinner. You came to Jesus broken. You came to Jesus bound. You came to Jesus unworthy and unrighteous and messed up and broken. Amen. And here is what Jesus did not do. Jesus did not just put a sticking plaster on you. Jesus did not just come and bandage you up. Jesus did not come and just put makeup on you to cover the sin and the mess and the brokenness. He didn't just come and kind of uh, patch you back together and then give you a self-help manual called the Bible and say you just carry on limping through life. For the rest of your days. No, here is what Jesus did. He took the old you. He took the broken you. The messed up you. The bound you. The, the one that was full of shame. The one that was unworthy. The one that was addicted. The one that, that was unholy. The one that was unrighteous. He took that person and he crucified that person to the cross. That person is dead and buried. And the Holy Spirit created a brand new person out of you. Hallelujah. All things have gone. Behold, 
you are a new creation. The new has come. The old you has been removed. The old you is dead. The old you has been buried. You, the blood of Jesus literally purged everything of the past out of you. And now you have a brand new identity as a child of God. Hallelujah. The new has come. What is the new? The righteous you. The holy you. The worthy you. The accepted you. The blessed you. The healed you. The free you. The chosen you. You are a child of the king. You are a son. You are a daughter. You are loved. He has a plan. He has a purpose. You have a destiny. He has filled you with his Holy Spirit. Everything of the past is gone. And you are a kindness man. You are a kindness woman. He has made a brand new person out of you. Can somebody give glory to Jesus tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me, let me read you that verse out of the Passion Translation. It says this. Now if anyone is enfolded into Christ, he has become an entirely new person. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Hallelujah. And then this is what the note says at the bottom, the footnotes. This would include our old identity, our life of sin, the power of Satan, the religious works of trying to please God, our old relationship with the world, our old mindsets. We are not reformed or simply refurbished. We are made completely new. By our union with Christ and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I remember um, the church that I was brought up in um, as a child. There was a, a man in that church um, who had a bad temper. Um, and now there may be people in your church that have a bad temper as well. But maybe no one knows about it. But everyone in that church knew about it because he would lose his temper in church. So if the pastor was preaching too long, he would stand up in the middle of the service and start shouting at the pastor. If, the, you know, he didn't like the worship, he would stand up and start shouting at the worship team, telling them to be quiet. If something happened that he didn't like, he would get in someone's face and he would have a go at them. And uh, this went on for quite some time. And I remember one service. I remember being there when the pastor finally, he lost it with the man who was always losing it. And he, he said to him, look, you know, we've had enough of you losing your temper, getting angry. You need to do something about this. And I remember what that man said. This must have been, you know, 20 years ago, but I can still remember it. He stood up and in front of everyone, he said this. He said, my grandfather had a bad temper. My father had a bad temper. And he said, and I've got a bad temper. And there's nothing I will ever be able to do about it. You see, friends, that man did not know the gospel. Because the gospel tells me, that all things have gone and the new has come. And that if anyone is in Christ, he is a brand new creation. Hallelujah. Who knows that tonight you are not defined by your grandfather. You're not defined by your father. You're not defined by your sickness. You're not defined by that divorce. You're not defined by that addiction. You're not defined by that sin. You're not defined by what that person did to you. The way you were treated by that church. You are that leader. You are not defined by that circumstance. But you are defined as a new creation. A child of the king. A daughter of the king. A son of the king. You are his beloved. You have been accepted you have been called you have been chosen you are a brand new creation hallelujah preach the full message of this new life everyone say new life again going into the greek for a moment but many of you will know that the greek word there for life is not the word bios where we get biology from in other words it's not 
that, that God gives you a better natural life. It's the word zoe, which means God's divine life. So the new life that you have is a new creation, is divine life. It is supernatural life. It is blessed life. It is overcoming life. It is victorious life. It is a life with a purpose. It is a life with a destiny. It is a life with hope. It's a life of freedom. It's a life of joy. It's a life of power. It's a life of authority. Hallelujah. If anyone, everyone say anyone. In other words, there is no one who is too far broken that they can't become a new creation. There is no one too damaged or too messed up. There is no one who's gone through anything where, where you cannot have a new creation experience tonight. Anyone that is in Christ, there is the potential and the power tonight that everything of the old order can be passed away. And everything of the new Everything of the Zoe, everything of the kingdom, everything of the life of Jesus can be yours tonight. Hallelujah. If anyone is what? In who? In Christ. Hallelujah. That's why it goes on to say in verse 18, all this is from God. So how do you get the new? Through him. Who knows you cannot make yourself new. You might be able to improve yourself. You might be able to help yourself. Who knows that, that a lot of people make a lot of money by trying to improve other people. A lot of people make a lot of money by giving advice how you can be a better person. But only Jesus is the one who can make you a brand new Person. Hallelujah. And he does not charge a penny. His, he, there is not a, there's not a course that you have to pay on. There's not a Bible school that you have to sign up for. The price was already paid when he shed his blood. And it's not about life improvement. It's not about life enhancement. It is about a brand new life. All this is from God who has reconciled us to Christ. Hallelujah. This is uh, kind of uh, similar to what Jesus said at the Last Supper in Luke chapter 22. If you want to turn there for a moment. Jesus said in Luke 22 verse 19. He took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying this is my body. Given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. Saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Everyone say new covenant. So there's new life. There's a new creation. And there's a new covenant. Who knows everything about Jesus is new. Amen. Amen. The fact that there is a new covenant means that there is also an old covenant. What was the old covenant? The old covenant was this. God wants to do so much. And if you obey the rules, and if you obey the law, and if you obey the commandments, then you can receive all that God has for you. And who knows that the history of the Old Testament was the children of Israel trying their hardest to please God and failing time after time after time. Amen? But here is Jesus. And Jesus comes and Jesus says this, I am going to make a new covenant. And in the new covenant, what you could not do, I will do. Amen? You see, the old covenant was all about your behavior. And when you failed, what was the message? Try harder. 
So the message of the old covenant was this. The more you do, the better you will be. And the harder you try, the closer to God you will get. Who knows that's a recipe to living in guilt and shame and living in the fear of not being good enough. And who knows that today many Christians still live like they're living under the old covenant. So they're trying their hardest to please God. They're trying their hardest to overcome their flesh. And they think the more they do, the more prayers they pray, the more Bible they know, the harder they serve, then somehow the closer to God they will get. But who knows, it does not matter what you do, it doesn't matter how hard you try, you will never come up to the standard. Religion always puts a standard so high. And just when you think you might be able to reach it, Guess what religion does? It raises the bar higher. And you will spend all your life miserable and guilty and condemned, never coming up to the measure, the standard. But here is what Jesus does. Jesus says religion is not the standard. I'm the standard. But I don't give you a ladder and say climb. Instead, I come and my grace picks you up. And my grace lifts you. And my grace says you could, I, I, my grace will lift you to a place where you can never get to on your own. And grace said it does not matter what you do. You will never, you will never, ever, ever, ever be in a place where you are separated from my love. You will never be in a place where you are separated from your identity as a son and as a daughter. There is a new covenant in place and the new covenant says this what you could not do Jesus has done the new covenant says all you have to do is come to a table and eat and drink because Jesus has paid the price all you have to do is receive it hallelujah the message of the new covenant is never never behave but it is always behold the message of the new covenant is never try, it's always trust. The message of the new covenant is never do more, but it's abide deeper. Who's glad that tonight you do not have to live in the fear of not being good enough? Amen? Who knows that tonight you can have complete freedom? Who knows that tonight you can have complete joy? Who knows that tonight you don't need to impress him? Hello? Who knows that tonight you don't have to improve yourself? Tonight it's not about how much Bible you've read this week or how many how much sin you've avoided this week or how much Bible you've read this week or how much faith you've got. The message of the gospel is this. Jesus has done it all. It is finished. Everything that would separate you from the Father has been taken away. You are in him. And he is in you. All you have to do is behold Jesus. All you have to do is trust Jesus. All you have to do is abide in Jesus. Hallelujah. Your life should be a fear-free zone. Your life should be a guilt-free zone. Your life should be a shame-free zone. Your life should be a comparison-free zone. Your, your life should be a, a, a self-effort-free zone. Your life is trusting him. It's enjoying him. Hallelujah. Who knows life is miserable without Jesus. So don't make life with Jesus miserable. You should enjoy Jesus. You should enjoy salvation. You should enjoy Christianity. 
Because it really is a gift. He has done it all. Hallelujah. New life. New creation. New covenant. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 9 says, do not lie to each other, since you've taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of the creator. Now, it's important you see this. We read 2 Corinthians 5 where it says the old has and the new has Come. But here it says, you have to do what to the old? Take off. Put off. And you have to do what to the new? Put on. You remember those two new uh, Greek words for new? One means new in time. The other means new in kind. When Paul writes in Corinthians and says, you are a new creation. He uses that word kainos, new in kind. God has made you a brand new creation. He hasn't just improved your old life. He has given you a brand new life. Hallelujah. But when Paul here says, put on the new self, it's the word neos, which means it's new in time. In other words, the new life was available 2,000 years ago. He paid the price. 2,000 years ago, the new came. Amen? But when does it become new in your time? When you decide to put it on. The old has, the new has, when? 2,000 years ago at the cross. But many people are still living in the old. Why? Because they have never taken it off. They've never, um, they're not living in the new because they've not put it on. And so the message of the gospel is in two parts. The first part is this. Jesus has destroyed the old. And Jesus has given the gift of the new. That's what he did. Our response today is this. You have to choose to take off the old. And you have to choose to put on the new. Amen? Who knows, I could go into, you know, a, a store and I could spend, you know, 10,000 pounds on buying you new clothes. But who knows that if they're in the bag, if they're in the wardrobe, it's meaningless. Hello? You have to decide, I want to put on the new. I'm taking off the old and putting on the new. And many Christians live ignorant of the new that is available. We're all familiar, right, with the story of Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus in the Gospels in Mark chapter 10. A blind beggar who was sat by the side of the road when uh, they, Jesus came to town. And the Bible says that he heard that Jesus was passing by. And he began to shout out, Jesus, son of Nazareth, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the crowd told him to be quiet, but he shouted even louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says that Jesus stopped and said, call him. And then it says this, throwing his cloak aside, he got to his feet and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, I want to see. And immediately his eyes were opened and he saw as his eyes were opened, what happened? 
It was a brand new life. The old life of darkness was over. The old life of begging was over. The old life of blindness was over. He, he had a brand new life. Now he could see. Now he could walk unaided. Now he could work. Now he had honor and dignity. Now his life had a purpose. The old had gone. The new had come. Who knows that he could not open his own eyes. Who knows that he could not restore his own sight. Only Jesus could give him new life. But before he got to Jesus, he had to throw off his cloak and get to him. You see, Jesus would open his eyes, but only Bartimaeus could take off his cloak. You see, the cloak was what identified him as a blind beggar. The cloak spoke of his old identity as a blind beggar. And Bartimaeus knew, if I'm going to step into the new life that Jesus has for me, I have to throw off everything of the old. So tonight, who wants that new creation? Life. Who wants that Zoe life that Jesus has for them? Who wants to walk in the new covenant that Jesus paid the price for 2,000 years ago? You have to decide right now, everything of the old, I'm taking it off tonight. Amen? I'm taking off the past. I'm taking off sin. I'm taking off guilt. I'm taking off fear. I'm taking off shame. I'm taking off brokenness. I'm taking off unforgiveness. I'm taking off the wounds of the past. I don't want to live with it anymore. Amen? And tonight I'm putting on joy. I'm putting on freedom. I'm putting on peace. I'm putting on passion. I'm putting on purpose. I'm putting on praise. I'm putting on freedom. I'm putting on victory. Tonight I am taking off everything of the old. And I am putting on everything of the new. Hallelujah. Until you decide. I am sick and tired of wearing old. The new will never be available. But when you decide, old is old, I want the new. I want the new life. I want the new creation. I want the, the Zoe life. I want the new covenant. I want the new that Jesus has for me. So tonight, I am throwing off everything of the old. Can someone say amen tonight? Amen. Amen. Are you getting something out of this tonight? Uh, let me just do a couple more scriptures. Mark chapter 1 verse 27. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. Jesus came to give new life. He came to make new creations. He came to make a new covenant. He came to give you a brand new wardrobe. And he came bringing a new message. What was new about his message? Because who knows that the New Testament had not been written yet. Hello? So actually, the content of his message was not new. It was the same scriptures that the Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees taught from. But the new thing about Jesus was this. He teaches with authority. In other words, when he teaches, stuff happens. He doesn't just bring words. He brings an encounter. He brings an experience. He brings... Amen. You know, the worst thing that you can ever say to a preacher, 
And we've got a few preachers here tonight. Shall I tell you whatever to say to a preacher? Oh, that, was a, that was a nice talk tonight. That, that was an, a nice word tonight, Pastor. Because the kingdom, the new teaching, is not just a nice word. It's not just a nice talk. When it's kingdom, stuff happens. Hallelujah. So tonight, we can talk. Who knows? There will be churches all over the world this weekend preaching about the cross. Preaching about the blood. Preaching about new life. About resurrection. But is anyone here tonight? You don't just want to talk about resurrection. You want an experience resurrection. Come on. You don't just want to hear about new life. You want to experience new life. Amen. Jesus didn't just come with words. He came with power. The, the new teaching of the kingdom is not just words. But it is a demonstration of the life of and the power of Jesus and his kingdom. Hallelujah. Friends, resurrection is real. Miracles are real. Healing is real. Deliverance is real. Salvation is real. Freedom is real. Provision is real. Amen. Tonight, God demonstrate new life in this place hallelujah when i was here in january for the uh, for the leaders day um, god opened up a door um, that service for me to preach the following week in norwich um, and so it was a real kind of last minute um, kind of thing that god did but i ended up preaching at this church in norwich and um, just as the the, the worship was beginning to start, a man walked into that service wearing his pajamas. Now, I don't know if what that's like around here, but that, you know, that, that for me was a little bit unusual. And, um, you know, um, it, it was not so unusual when I lived in Barnsley. That was quite common, but, uh, but certainly, um, you know, it, not common in other parts of the country. But um, uh, this man came in wearing his pajamas and he was saying, I've escaped, I've escaped. <laughs> so I thought, my goodness. You know, is there an asylum somewhere, a prison? Where's he escaped from? And, you know, he, he explained that afterwards that he had been in the ICU in the hospital and he'd been hooked up to an oxygen machine for two weeks because he was suffering from severe long COVID. And that day he'd said, he said to the doctors and nurses, I've had enough. I'm, I'm getting to church as a healing service tonight. And they said to him, no. They said, if you come off of oxygen, you'll die. You cannot breathe without oxygen. So he waited until the doctors and nurses had turned their back. And then he put on his pajamas, his dressing gown, and he did a runner out of the hospital. Or rather, not a runner, he did a limp out of the hospital. And he called someone up and they took him to church. And that man was sat there and he looked like he, he literally looked like he was dying. I thought, I'm going to have to resurrect that man. Well, he came out to the front for prayer. The power of God touched him. And he began to walk around that church building. He was literally like a new creation. His countenance changed. His breathing changed. Everything changed. He messaged me the next day saying the first time in two weeks he was off oxygen, completely healed. I mean, this is the new teaching. It's not just words, but it is power. It is life. It is demonstration. Amen. Well, so, some of you may have heard me tell you the story before. A, a few years ago, I was in Argentina and um, I was praying for people at the end of the, the message and prayed for this young man called Yogi. And um, 18 months later, I was back in that church and Yogi shared his testimony. He said that all his life, he struggled with mental health problems. He'd been diagnosed with a serious form of schizophrenia. And he would get so violent that his family would keep him tied to the bed in their house. And he said, in desperation, they brought me to this church 18 months ago. 
And he said, at the end of the meeting, you came and laid hands on me. And he said, in that moment, something changed. And he said, here I am, 18 months later. I'm healed. I'm in my right mind. I'm free. I'm saved. I'm full of the Holy Spirit. And I'm being trained in the leadership class of this church. <laughs> Friends, that is the gospel. That is new life. Who tonight is ready for a demonstration of the power of God? Anyone here tonight, you need healing. You need a miracle. You need a breakthrough. Friends, resurrection life is here tonight. Miracles are here. Healing is here. Jesus has paid the price. And the kingdom is available. Can you say amen? Amen. Let me just look at, at two more scriptures. Um, Revelation chapter 21 verse 5. Says this, he who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. Hallelujah. Behold, I am making all things new. Everyone say all things. I am making all things new. What is Jesus doing right now? Who knows Jesus has not been on vacation for the past 2,000 years. What's he been doing for 2,000 years at the right hand of the Father? Making all things new. Hallelujah. And then he says, behold, it's finished. I've done it. If anyone's thirsty for the new, come and drink. Because there is new wine available. Hallelujah. That means that tonight, anything in your life that is old, that is stale, that is dull, that is boring, he has come to make all things new. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5, the scripture that we read before in the Amplified Version, it says this, Behold, the fresh and the new has come. So tonight, you may be a Christian, but you might say, you know what? <clears throat> My prayer life is stale. He makes all things new. Tonight, you might say, you know what? I've lost my passion and my hunger for God. He makes all things new. You might say, I used to have a ministry. I used to have an anointing. I used to have a dream and a purpose and a vision. He makes all things new. Who's ready tonight for a new encounter? Who's ready tonight for a new anointing? Who's ready tonight for a new move of God in their life? Who's ready tonight for a new move of the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. And in fact, Pastor Denver, even during the worship tonight, I just felt that this was a prophetic word for you tonight, that God would say to you, behold, I make all things new. And get ready for a new anointing over the next 12 months. Get ready for a new explosion of the kingdom in your life. Right now, all those hurts, all those disappointments, all, all the, the, the brokenness of the past right now, all those, those times when people have let you down right now, 
God is saying, I am removing the old. I am removing the pain of the old. I am removing the trauma of the old right now. I'm removing the, the disappointment of the old right now. And God says, get ready for the new thing. Get ready for the new move. Get ready for the new outpouring. Get ready for the new demonstration. Get ready for the new wine to be released into and through your life like never before. Today, this year, right now at the cross. Easter 2024 will be different to, 20, to Easter 2023. You will be able to look back in, in 12 months time and your testimony will be this. The old is gone and I am walking in the new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Behold, the old is gone. The new has come. Hallelujah. It is done. It is done. I am the Alpha, the, the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty. Someone say, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty for the new wine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last scripture. Hebrews chapter 10. Everyone say new life. We want to say new creation. Say new covenant. Say new mind. Say new heart. Say new spirit. Say new wardrobe. Say new teaching. Say all things new. Say new wine. Hallelujah. Who's ready tonight for something new? God, do something new. Final scripture, Hebrews 10 says this, verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Hallelujah. Tonight, the presence of God is here. And what is in his presence? New life. New life, new creation. In his presence, all things are made new. And tonight we enter his presence by what? A new and living way. What was the old way to get into his presence? It was the blood of animals. It was sacrifice. It was offering. It was certain men on certain days who could enter a certain place. But Jesus came and he did away with that system. And he says, there's a new way into my presence. And the new way is faith. Tonight, there is no need for sacrifice or offering. Because Jesus has paid the price. And aren't you glad tonight that it is no longer about the high priest? Aren't you glad that tonight it's not about the day of atonement? It's not about the holy of holies. Tonight it's not about any one person. It's not about a special mood or a special atmosphere or a special conference. Tonight anyone at any time can enter the presence of God. So tonight it doesn't matter whether you're the pastor of a church or whether you're a five-year-old child. You can enter the presence of God. It doesn't matter tonight if you've lived this amazingly super spiritual life this week or, this, or tonight was the first time you thought about God for 12 months. You can enter his presence. Tonight it doesn't matter whether you've been saved for 50 years or five minutes. You can enter his presence. 
You can step into the new right now. Aren't you glad that tonight it's not about being in a special building or a special conference or a special atmosphere? The presence of God will be just as real when you get home as it will be here right now. Praise God for the worship team tonight. But who knows, it's not about a song. It's not about music. It's not about an atmosphere or a feeling. The new and living way is Jesus. That means you can be in your bedroom right now, tonight, and you can step into the presence of God. That means you can be watching this at home on the recording afterwards, and you can step into the presence of God. You can be in your car on the way to work on Monday morning or Tuesday if you've got Monday off. And you can enter into the presence of God. That means that tonight everything could be wonderful in your life or you could be going through hell. And tonight you can enter into the presence of God. The new and the living way. It's not dependent on your circumstances. It's not dependent on what you're going through. It, Jesus is the new and living way. You can step into the presence of God where all things are made new because of the blood, because of the cross because of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a new and living way. The way into the presence is alive. Because what is the way? He is the way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. The reason the way is living is because he is living. That means that as long as he is alive, there's a way into the presence. Well, he's already died once and he ain't going to die again. That means the way into the presence is always available. That means it does not matter what you do, there's a way in. It doesn't matter how far away you run, there's a way in. It doesn't matter what you are going through right now. It doesn't matter what the doctors say. It doesn't matter what your bank account says. There's a way in. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. There's a way in. Because the way is Jesus. And in his presence, all things are made new. Hallelujah.